Hi everyone, Angela here. To make these coasters, start out by cutting a piece of cardboard five inches by five inches square to use as a template. Or you can use a template that you have that's close to that size. You can really make these in any size you like. You can find all the links to the tools that I use in the description below this video. Making these coasters is a great way to use up your fabric scraps. Cut out six squares in total, one for the bottom base, one for the lining, and four for the fronts. They can be any fabric that you choose. Fold each of the front four pieces in half with wrong sides together and press the center fold. Place your base and your lining with wrong sides together. Lay one of the front pieces down with the fold towards the center of the square and the edges lined up with the top. Working around clockwise, lay the second piece down again with the fold towards the center and the outer edges matching on the right. Match the third piece to the bottom edge and then the final piece will match the outer edge but you'll have to slip half of it underneath the very first piece. You want the center where all the folds meet to be nice and tight. You can put a pin through all the layers to hold it all in place. Then pin or clip all around the edges if you need to. Using a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance, start your sewing about an inch down from the top edge. There's no need to back tack. Stop your stitching quarter inch from the edge, needle down, lift your foot and pivot, and continue sewing like this around the rest of the coaster. Because there are a lot of layers, the fabric's gonna wanna shift around a bit. So hang on to all the layers, or if you have a walking foot, it's a good idea to use it. When you come around to the start again, just overlap the stitching about an inch or so. There's no need to back tack. Next, we need to trim each corner. We'll cut about halfway between the stitching and the edge. And then I like to go back in, trim a little bit more on each side of the seam allowance on a bit of a curve. Again, down the middle and then a little bit on each side. Remove the pin and then open up the center Push your index finger underneath two of the top pieces and right into the corner. Hold the other side of the corner with your thumb and then really push through to the other side with your thumbnail. The corner should look pretty good already by doing it this way. Should your corners need a bit more help, just use a knitting needle or a chopstick to poke them out a little bit more. Next, give it a press, keeping the seams in the center and the opening closed. Now you can leave this as complete, but I like to give it a quarter inch or six millimeter top stitch all around, back tacking at the start and finish. It just helps to keep all the pieces in place. For the second design, cut out your six squares again. This time, press the four front pieces in half into triangles. This time when you lay the front pieces down, you actually line up two of the side edges with the fold in the center. Work around clockwise again and tuck the last corner underneath the first piece. Pin or clip all together and then you're going to sew around press and top stitch just like we did with the first one. These are great as gifts on their own, but if you pair it up with a bold cozy or kitchen scarf, it's great as a gift set. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Take care and happy sewing.